Good evening, Excellency ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Cambodia Global Dialogue or Southeast Asia TV. Tonight I have the great pleasure to have uh, with me a good friend of mine, His Excellency Ambassador of India, Excellency Dinesh Patnaik. And uh, we're going to have uh, a nice dialogue about the relation, the bilateral relation between uh, India and uh, Cambodia. So, uh, Dinesh, welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, Dinesh, uh, Ambassador, I think we're friends, so uh, perhaps before we, we get to our dialogue, uh, I'd like to give you a few minutes to, you know, for the audience uh, to know a bit about yourself. Myself. Yes. My name is Dinesh Patnaik. Uh, this is my first ambassadorial posting. Before that, I was the Deputy Ambassador in Vienna to the International Atomic Energy Agencies, to the different UN agencies, and to Austria and Montenegro. Uh, prior to that, I've served in China, in Bangladesh, in the UN in Geneva, and in Delhi as the press advisor to the Prime Minister and also as in charge of the UN divisions. So it's been a long way for me. Uh, literally now, this is the 23rd year of my service. Um, I feel old, yeah. <laughs> mm, but uh, Cambodia has actually made me feel young all over again. <laughs> well, welcome back to the region. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know... Uh, You've been in Cambodia nearly a year, no? Yes, yes just yeah. completed a year. Yeah. So, so far, what's your impression of... Uh, oh, uh, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, you see, I come from a place called Orissa in yes. India. Yes. And I joke to my friends that come with Cambodia. Odia is where I come from and Cambodia. Yeah. <laughs> and because Cambodia is exactly like the state I come from. Is that right? In terms of climate, in terms of the people, okay. in terms of uh, the fruits, the vegetables, the rivers, the fish. Yes. It's exactly the same. So for <laughs> me, it's literally after 23 years <laughs> yeah. as if I'm coming back home. <laughs> and, and, I, and I really love this country. Yes. It, is, it has been wonderful to me this one year. Yeah. And I'm, I'm absolutely delighted to be here. Well, historically, you know, Cambodia have a long, maybe a thousand year re relation or more than that. You know, the, the temple Angkor Wat has bear a lot of uh, imprint. Uh, you, no, not just Angkor. They've just discovered, if you must have heard after yes. using laser technology, yes. they discovered an entire city called Mahindra Pratapgarh. Wow. Which is a huge city with another 18 temples inside. Of course, it's all gone yes. to ruins. Yes. yes. But the point is, what happened between India and Cambodia goes back to the very origins of Cambodia. I mean, yes. if you look at the myth of the origin of Cambodia, yes. they talk about an Indian prince coming to this region, marrying a local princess, and yes. then they're setting up the country of Cambodia. Yes. So, what has happened is, what is technology transfer today happened many years ago. Yes. King Sihanouk used to always say that we are cousins <laughs> of the same culture. Yes, indeed. But I would take it further. We yes. are actually brothers yes. from the same womb. Yes. We just grew up at different times. Yes. There was a transfer of technology from India, but you used it to make better things. Mm. I mean, the Angkor Wat. Yes. We don't have a temple like the Angkor Wat. We have many beautiful temples, but the Angkor Wat is a pinnacle of uh, architecture. Mm. The ability to build something like that showed that the talents, the capabilities and the details to which the Cambodian people went to do it. It was amazing. Yes. <laughs> and so we feel proud when we see yes. this. It's yes. all Cambodian. Mm. You know, there are many who claim that, uh, you see, it's a, it's how do you say, it's transfer of technology, yes. but it depends on how you use exactly the technology. how you use technology, yeah. You can buy a Boeing yes. plane, yes. but after that driving it is your business, yes, whether exactly. you drive it well yeah, or not. Exactly. It's the same way. Well, it, 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 it's amazing that uh, you use, uh, you mentioned the word, uh, uh, transfer technology in those days it mm. is uh, it, they don't call technology but it's clearly exactly. yeah, some transfer of know-how and it's not just technology science. in building yes everything literature yes your language yes the script Khmer script is exactly the same as the Pali Sanskrit script yes yes you used Pali and Sanskrit in the beginning but yes. you kept the Khmer script yes in fact I feel proud that the Cambodians managed to keep its own script because yes. if you look around you yes indeed it's all everybody Romanized. else has Romanized yes Romanized why yeah. should you Romanize yes. you are a proud nation with yes. your own script mm -hmm. so you have your mm -hmm. own script and it is wonderful when I see how the vowels come in the beginning and yes. the consonants afterwards yes the same structure as all Indian languages yes so, amazing and we have a professor now yes. who is giving a course at uh, the Priya Siyanok Buddhist University he is an expert in Pali and Sanskrit. Yes. He says it's not that the script came from India to 
Cambodia one way process. It came here and it went back. So many uh -huh. of us, many of our Indian alphabets have the same script as uh, the Khmer alphabet. So there was an exchange. There was exchange. Uh, so it's not a one way yes, process. Yes. And many Khmer people like the Thais and others went and settled in India. Yes. There is a tribe in the Meghalaya region called Khasi tribe. Yes. If you hear them speak, it's the same as the Khmer language. You're kidding me. I'm not joking. Wow. Well, uh, you know, Master, now transfer technology, we're going to fast forward, you know, a thousand years later. Yeah, yeah. but you see, in <laughs> the middle, the, yeah. after the collapse of the Khmer Empire, yeah. relationship between India and Cambodia slowed down. Yes. Naturally, it's a yes. huge empire. The yes. empires have relations. Also, colonialism. Ah, uh, yes, yes. You were colonized by the French, we were yes. colonized by the British. Yes. And the British and French were not the best of friends at that time. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a situation where there was not much interaction between yes. India okay. and Cambodia. Okay. Till King Sihanouk. Yes. King Sihanouk developed a very close relationship with Pandit Nehru. Yes. And he took lessons from him from India's war of independence. Mm. We never fought a war. Yes. We quietly, Mahatma Gandhi, you know the story. Yes, indeed, indeed. It was the non-violent protest yes. against the Britishers telling them that either you get out of the country or we will not cooperate with you. So you can't run a country. Not cooperate. We will not fight you. We will not fight you. Yeah. But you have to run the country. Yes. If we do not cooperate, the people of the country, how can you run the country? Exactly. So you have to go away after some time. Yes. So that's what the British did. They realized they cannot run the country. So they left. Yes. Similarly, Sihanouk also realized that there's no point in having a war against the French. Yes. Start negotiating and he derived lessons from it. So he used to always say that Jawaharlal Nehru was not only my friend, he was my greatest teacher. Mm. And they had a very close relationship. Yes, indeed. And it is strange, but Nehru was the one who introduced King Sihanouk to Chow Enlai in Bandung. <laughs> and then of course there's a very close relationship between King Sihanouk and Chow yes. Enlai which went through the whole process, they became very close. Yes. India, to a large extent, was looking at Asia as the future of the world. Hmm. And looking Nehru east. was looking east always from the beginning. Yes. Nehru always considered Asia to be the future of the world. And if you know the Asian Relations Conference in Bandung, yes. the Panchil, yeah. that time Nehru was very positive, optimistic about Asia. Then 62, we had the India-China war. Yes. We won't go into details why mm -hmm. it happened, many reasons. But to a large extent, Nehru and the Congress party turned away from Asia because of that and looked west. Ah, interesting. So interesting. what happened is, after the 62 war, yes. even though we were part of the Indochina conflict, in the sense of not Indian China, Indochina, in the sense that we were part of the International Control Commission yes. on Indochina, mm -hmm. we were the chairman. Yes. And in fact, it was because of us that a lot of the things came together. Yeah. And Cambodia as an entity, we managed to preserve it because everybody wanted to divide it. Mm. it up. We said, we just want a zone of peace, no fighting in this area, people should. And for us, sovereignty was very important. Yes, yes. After having been colonized and after having helped African nations and nations yes. around the Indeed. world to decolonize, we were very clear that the sovereignty of a country was paramount. Mm. And we did not want anybody to interfere. Our thing was no outside forces should be active in this region. Yes, indeed. So when Lonnol was uh, put in power yeah. by outside forces, yes. we did not recognize Lonnol government, but we also did not recognize the Sihanou government that time in exile yes. because it yes. was based in Beijing. Exactly. Yeah. Our thing was the people of Cambodia have to decide. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason we never recognized the Khmer Rouge government also. Yes. And we closed down our mission and left. Yes. And after the Khmer Rouge government, we were the first non-socialist country in the world to recognize the Heng Samrin government in 1981. Yes. We indeed. opened our embassy then. Yes. And we were the only ones when the entire world hmm. actually did not recognize the Cambodia government. Amazing. In fact, the entire world accepted to put the Khmer Rouge as yes. a member of the UN. Exactly. And not the... Hun Sen and Heng Samrin government. Yes. So it was only India which fought for mm. and through the Paris Peace Accords, etc. We finally came to a situation when in 1993 the first elections were held. Yes. And Cambodia has remained a democracy till now. Yes. So for us, we are proud that we stood by Cambodia in its time of need. Yes. Uh, 86, 
84, Indira Gandhi, when she, after she recognized, he said Angkor Wat needs renovation. Yes, indeed. 86, we came in to renovate the Angkor Wat complex. Mm -hmm. That time, it was full of machine guns, bullet holes, there were Khmer Rouge rebels still there. Yes. No other country was in sight. Yes. We were the only ones working there. <laughs> Later on, now that the world has come in to yes. help, Everybody has. Everybody is yeah. having. At that time, there was nobody. Yes, indeed, indeed. They didn't recognize Cambodia, forget about going to the Angkor Wat. Exactly. But we did, we helped. Mm. This has made us very close. But we have another problem. Mm. We are not a mercantilist mentality. Yes. We don't go to a country, pay money and yes. have friendship. For us, yes. we believe that if there is to be friendship, it has to be based on common mutual, interests, yes. mutual desire. Yes. So we have concentrated, like I said, transfer of technology mm -hmm. 1,000 years ago. ago yeah. We concentrate on the same thing, technology yeah. appropriate to Cambodia. Yes, yes. So we train more than 100 people every year, uh, almost about 1,000 people we have trained up till now, more than 1,000 in, in, in different fields in yes. uh, agriculture, yes. science and technology, uh, IT, yes. computers, everything, management. So it's a, a form of uh, knowledge, technology knowledge transfer, transfer. Yeah, in people, modern people, days. Modern days. Yes. We also send a lot of students on scholarships. We have a large amount of projects in this country. Yes. We do irrigation projects, mm. we do power transmission line projects, road projects, we are building up a school, there's a hospital project yes. for uh, mentally challenged uh, youngsters. Mm. So we, we're doing a lot. Yeah. Then capacity building. Yes, indeed. The only entrepreneurship development center in the entire of Cambodia is the Cambodia India Entrepreneurship Development Center. Where is the base? It's here in Phnom Penh. Okay, okay. It's called the India School by many yes. people, but basically what it does, it teaches people with skills yes. to start a business. Ah, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship is most important. Yes, exactly. So I may be a great barber. Yes. But I don't know where to get a loan to start a business. All right. So I do go and do a two-week course, which yes. tells me where do I get a loan, how mm. do I file my tax returns, how okay. do I file this, yes. how do I set up a company, how do I do my accounts. Yes. Essential things. Yes. So what we're doing is one is the skills mm. and then help them to become an entrepreneur. Yes. Because one of the few things which I find in Cambodia, which I hope the government will change after some time. Okay. Every youngster wants to become an accountant or a banker. <laughs> You are so right. You are so right. I, mean, I go to people it, it and has tell. To change. I told people you have to start working with your hands. Yes. Uh, building up a country, you can build only if you work with your hands. Yes. You can't build a country by, with figures. You know, you need some people with figure, but you need you, you, not you, the, not everybody. Not everybody. You need people to plumbers, mechanics. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But don't you see? A shift now that people start realizing that uh, I hope they need to shift to. They uh, have to because uh, this skill. country is 60 percent younger than 30 years of age. Yes. 60 percent of the population is younger than 30 yes. years. If you're younger than 30 years of age, yes, you have a huge life in front of you. You ah. are the ones who will shape the country. Yes, people like us, we are now dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> not you. <laughs> we, we, yeah, I, I feel like that. <laughs> but. We are of a different generation. Yes. The future belongs to these young people. Yes. And if the young people are not guided the right way, mm -hmm. is how do you build up a society? Yeah. Society is not built through uh, being, you know, uh, you going in the evening to parties and yes. uh, just being an accountant, manager, yeah. not yeah. building up things. You exactly. need to build up institutions yeah. Yeah. in this yeah. country. And these young people are the future. And I see there's a spark in all of them. Mm. They just need to be guided. Yes. So I have a feeling. Cambodia, the future is bright mm -hmm. and uh, with the young people in charge and they have shown in these elections that they are willing to participate yes. in the building up of the future yes. of the country. Yeah. It's a very good sign. I, I, I see now that uh, economically speaking, you know, at, uh, in, in the early uh, 90s, uh, people uh, look at the garment industry, oh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's something that they uh, need to do because they need a job, right? But it's mostly women. But then as the country become uh, more stable, more peaceful, people have means to go to school, they, they go the easy way, right? I mean, they go get this degree, but they realize when they get this degree, they, they, the market is not, uh, is not there for them to get employed. So more and more I see this uh, realization. Maybe uh, it is a full year, <laughs> sort of like trial and error, you know, because by the time they graduate, they realize, oh my God. Now I start to shift. Uh, but also I see the force of the 
uh, integration, ASEAN economic in, uh, community, That's the FDI coming in, uh, all the bilateral relations we have, for example, with India, you, you're coming to establish a, a business, uh, people need, wait a minute, I need good technician, I need... So this is also things yeah, that I, I see. No, no, it is happening and it's, I'm glad there are people like you who are thinking about it because it's yeah. very important that you plan for the future. Yeah. The point with it is, you can't start doing things after the economic community has come. Yes, yes. You have to start yeah. five years before the economic community. You have to prepare. Because once economic community comes and people can move freely, yes. if you do not have the skills, others yes. will come and take exactly. your job. Exactly. You will be left with the unskilled work. Yes, yes, indeed. So the point is, if you have to prepare for an integration, you yeah. have to prepare now. Yeah. And that's why it, it's important that, uh, you know, uh, India in this case, when you train a pool, say now you have about a, you know, to change a country, you don't need a million people. No, no, no. You no. need the the right amount of people, people. with the right skill, yeah, right exactly, vision, yeah. uh, and the capacity building that you provide to uh, very sophisticated technical skill that you know people. It's go, very important. Yeah, it, it's very important. And yeah. uh, uh, but but looking for the future, you know, uh, how do you see? Cambodia, India, uh, deepening the economic relations. See, in what area do you think? See, let me tell you two things. One is economics. Yes. I'll, I'll start with the politics yes, overall. Exactly. We are two countries with no problems between yes. us. Yes, yes, indeed. It's the ideal base to yes. have a relationship. Yes. When you have no problem with your friend, yeah. you have the best of friends. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't have any issues, no political issues, no yes. commercial, no yes. economic. So the base is there. Now it all depends on whether you can build on the base. Mm. Economic relations, it is natural for these two countries yes. to do well. Yes. Today, India's trade with ASEAN is yes. more than $80 billion. And many of it is in the ASEAN yes. region. We have a large Indian population here. Mm -hmm. Not large by other standards, but yes. large by these standards. Yeah. We have many businesses from agriculture to sugar mills to rice to in the garments to yeah. textiles to IT to pharmaceuticals to everything we have business going on. Yeah. So there is a lot of future. But Cambodia has to look at itself. Yes. You are a very strong country if you really look at it. Because how do you gauge the strength of a country? Yeah. You gauge by the proportion of resources to people. Mm. Per capita resource availability in this country. Yes. You have everything. You have good land. Mm. You have no water problems. Yeah. In fact, you have more water than you need. <laughs> but if you can manage to yes. have irrigation systems, yeah. the water that you get in the rainy season can also be used in the yes. dry season. How do you harness this? You have resources? mines, which yes. means you have everything from iron ore to yes. uh, titanium yeah. to rubies to yeah. you name it. You have uh, tourism potential. You have the Angkor complexes. You have Phnom Penh. You have Sihanoukville. Yeah. You have beaches. You have all the resources necessary and a small population of yes. 14 million, yes. young population. Yeah. So for you, you are on the cusp of a demographic dividend, mm. a resource dividend, everything. You cannot go wrong. Mm. The only way you can go wrong yes. is if you do not take care. Yes, indeed. indeed. So you're talking about sustainable development in, in a larger context. Oh, how, how do we look at our resource? but in uh, exploitation that is uh, sustainable, uh, mindful of the environment. I mean, nowadays with the Rio Plus 20, with all this global talk about climate change, everything, these are important. I, I think yeah, we... But you have to also look at the mistakes people have made. Okay. Look okay. at the mistakes in Africa. Yes, yes. They're also resource rich. Yes. But they're still poor. Why? And sometimes they say it, uh, too much resource is a curse. So what has happened in Africa is, you have allowed your resources to be exploited by others. Yes. You have to exploit your resources. Yes. The moment you are dependent on others to exploit your resources, you are yes. giving away your resources yes. to people who cannot help you. They yes. should come and be your partners in developing. Yes. Uh -huh. They should not yes. come in. So that is a danger. Yes. And that you are still a young nation, mm -hmm. you can prevent it. Don't let others take away resources. Let yes. them come and help you. Yes. Be part of the partner, uh, partnership. partnership and then and you develop. grow along, you learn along the way. Along the hopefully way. someday you have uh, uh, acquired enough knowledge that you can do on your own. Say. That's true. I, 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 I can't help when you mention uh, some uh, agriculture sector, uh, for example, rice, and we're talking about uh, this uh, 
this uh, what you call a biomass and I understand that India is quite advanced uh, in, in this sort of technology and uh, many Cambodian companies are buying yeah. this, this sort I'll, of... I'll give you an example. Yeah. Uh, rice. Yes. Rice, you, you have 8 million production, yes. I think. Yeah, tons. Mm, tons. So now rice produces rice husk. When yes. you mill the rice, you have exactly. the husk. Yeah. What do you do? You throw away the husk. You throw away. You have to, to find a place. Yeah. Yeah. So in India, we have gasifiers, yes. the cheapest gasifiers in the world, yes. to turn those uh, husks into gas, yes. which can run a turbine, turbine. to produce electricity. Yes. Usually we do co-generation, which yes. means that the rice husk produces electricity for the rice mill to yes. function. So it doesn't need electricity anywhere yes. else. But because you have so much amount of rice husk, you yeah. can actually produce electricity to feed into the grid also. And you and today Cambodia, one of the one of the reasons yeah. for not too much industry in Cambodia yes. is the high price of it's electricity. High price electricity, I concur with you. Yeah. So if yeah. you 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 have a lot of hydroelectric projects coming yeah. up, lot of other yeah. projects coming up. So hopefully in the next five years, Cambodia will be self-sufficient in electricity yes. and cheap electricity. Yeah. But the co-generation helps. You yes. use all your resources yes. to produce. So already there are a few companies working. Yes. Soma Group is working with few mm. Indian companies. Indeed, I understand. These and are huge companies. Mm. But this, to me, is, is, is a, a perfect form of a technical, technological transfer, economic development, partnership, you know. Everything uh, all yes, together. All I together. Agree. It's, I it's, agree. it's a really a whole, uh, sort of like a holistic picture on how a partnership uh, yeah, should work. Should work. Yeah. I completely agree with Yes. You. And it is something that we are very proud of. Yes. And uh, everybody knows of the great relation we have with Cambodia. Yes. In fact, in India, we are all thankful to Cambodia. I'll give you a small insight into what happened. Oh. Uh, you see, Japan, uh, China, others have been dialogue partners of ASEAN for a very long time. Yes. My our problem was we were dialogue partners only in 1990. Yes. 92. 92. 92 yes. And you'll ask me, why were we so late in coming? Because when we were trying to be dialogue partners in the 80s, Yes. The ASEAN offered us dialogue partner, but the condition is that we do not recognize Cambodia. <laughs> because, you see, at yeah, that time, nobody that time. recognized Cambodia. Yes, yes. We yes. were the only country recognizing Cambodia. Yes. And so the condition was that if you stop recognizing Cambodia, you can become You're a welcome. dialogue partner of ASEAN. Interesting. So Interesting. when Cambodia joined the ASEAN, yes. the first thing the Cambodians did was to try and get India as a dialogue partner. Yes. That's the reason the first time India came as a partner, Yes. Was in 1992 in Phnom Penh. Wow, it's quite interesting. And in 2012 yes. in Phnom Penh again, yes. we had the first summit meeting of yes. the. And last year, sorry, in 2002. Yes. And in 2012, yes. we had our 10th anniversary yes. of the summit it meeting. It was elevated. So for us, yeah. Cambodia has been a close friend. Yes. You know, people cannot see the ties. People see Cambodia's ties with other countries. Yes. But our ties are. Intricate. It's like I yes. told you, umbilical cord. Yes, yes, indeed. You don't have to tell the world this yes. is my brother. Yes. Everybody knows it's your brother. Yes. When you have a friend, you have to tell the world that's yes. my friend. No, I, I must say what you just said, uh, because last year I was quite involved in ASEAN matter with the uh, foreign uh, service. And uh, it is true that, uh, you know, from speech, from declaration, uh, it's a lot, I would say, not just purely an economic uh, expression, but a lot of uh, emotional, uh, uh, psychological exactly. uh, reverberation from this sort of uh, normally so-called very formal, yeah. well, you know, uh, meetings. exactly. Right. So, so I, I am very happy. Y y you know, in fact, uh, I am glad because now you know the relation in the ASEAN, you know, and in that Cambodia is in there. It's getting stronger and stronger. Right. Uh, from the think tank perspective also. Exactly, yes. exactly. And the other thing which we forgot to talk about, yes. the great relation between, is the religious yes, connection. Yes, yes. I mean, it's very strange. Southeast Asia, all the religions in Southeast Asia have come from India. First came Hinduism, yes. which you see in the temples of Angkor, yes, Borobudur, yeah. Champa, ba Bagan yes. in yes. Myanmar. Then came Buddhism. Yes. So you see it in Bayon, yes. in all the big, uh, uh -huh. so Buddhism spread, and also Islam. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Brunei, Malaysia, all Islam well, came India from is India. India is huge, you know. You uh, look at the world so, map, it's huge. So, and with Cambodia, the yes. Buddhist link is amazing. Yes. 
I mean, you're 95% Buddhist, and yeah. all of them, at some stage or the other, look to India as the birthplace of the Buddha and the Buddha goddess yes. Nirvana. Yeah. And uh, I find it fascinating. I find this really an amazing <laughs> relationship. I had gone to meet the Supreme Patriarch and other people in the Buddhist. Yes. We are doing a lot of things with the uh, Buddhist uh, community yes. here. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, we are trying to help in preserving manuscripts. And the, 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 the manuscripts, yes, yes. what happened during the Khmer Rouge period, a lot of the manuscripts were destroyed yes. and were thrown. Yeah. So, a lot of the Khmer Rouge people went into the pagodas yeah. and just threw out the manuscripts yes. saying this is all useless. Yes. Because you know the Khmer Rouge mm. being yeah. communists were yeah. Yeah. very anti-religious. Mm. So many of the manuscripts have been lost, valuable manuscripts. Yes. But many of them are still available. Problem is that people who could read Pali and Sanskrit have died. Yes. Ah. So you don't have people now who can yes. read this thing. Yes. So we are working on a proposal to train people in this, to train them how to read the... Yes manuscripts, yes. how to catalogue them, keep them, so that, because these are heritage yes. of Cambodia. Yes, these go back a thousand years. More. Yeah, more than that. Uh -huh. Wow. So well, my friend, uh, it's, uh, it's quite a very fascinating uh, historical uh, perspective on our uh, 1,000 year plus uh, relationship. Unfortunately, I, I hate this, uh, w this 30 minutes because by the time we get warm up, we're almost uh, <laughs> at the end of, uh, of the that's show. True, that's true. But uh, I think there'll be other opportunity where I would like to invite you back for probably more focused discussion. Next time we could talk about the democracy because India is the, the mean, world's largest democracy. You had your elections recently yes, exactly. and we're going to have our elections I, next year. I, exactly. And there are many other issues that I would uh, really want to extract from your wells of uh, wisdom and knowledge and experience and perhaps share uh, through this uh, show to the, the Cambodian population, you know, uh, the, those who watch this show. Speaking on sharing, uh, I'd like to ask you if you have any message for uh, the Cambodian audience. I have a message, well, not exactly a message, advice. You're a great country. I mean, for me, this one year that I've been here, I've seen how wonderful a country you are, full of wonderful people. You have a great future. The young people have shown that they're willing to take the future into their hands. Mm. They are the future of the yeah. country. Yeah. And I have a message for the young people, see what the country needs. The country needs both stability as well as growth. Yes. It needs stability and availability of resources, the need for the young people to take the challenge, to grasp the future and keep it in their hands. Yes. And so it's up to you, the young people of this country, to decide what the country is going to be. That's all I can say. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much for taking the time on short notice to come and prepare and share from your heart your view on uh, the relation between our two great countries, which uh, go way back. And for me, I learned so much on things that uh, I would not, be able to learn from the books. That's true. And many times reading, you know, you read a lot of history book and everything, but certain thing you mentioned is not written there. That's true. So That's true. let me just say on behalf of the audience and the studio, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very much, Hannah. Thank, thank, thank you very thank much. You. Well, <clears throat> we're coming to the end of the show, and uh, I must say that uh, it's quite revealing in uh, this historical uh, perspective how, you know, certainly you see dimension that you, even though you're quite educated, you read a lot, uh, certain thing coming out and you sort of like, wow, I never expect that. And this is exactly how I feel for, for this show. Normally I, I drive a lot of the, the process in the debate, but in this case I'm more a student of history uh, as it relates to Cambodia and India. So I must say that uh, Look forward to have a more topical discussion with the, my good friend, the Ambassador. And on that note, I want to say good night and I hope you enjoy uh, this dialogue.